the acceptance of farmers given that the reduction of 40% is considered a, a success and failure to achieve a, a, reduction, par, a, a reduction target of 50% will not um, result in, in sanctions. So I will, leave it, uh, I will leave it with that. Right. Th thank you very much. Before I, before I forget about it, by the way, uh, all the streaming platforms that we're on, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, you can ask your questions, including also in the Zoom that we're currently in. For those who are in the Zoom, please use the Q&A button if you have any questions, and we will get to those in due time. Um, let's get to Madame Aguilar. Um, also, uh, on the political uh, question here, one of the actors who have to implement new rules on the farm to fork strategy are the farmers. And so my question would be, what are the effects that you see that this strategy would have on farmers and maybe also address specifically in your country, Spain, what, would, what do you think would be the, the effects? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much uh, to the invitation because uh, I'm really very happy to stay here with all of us, um, all of you, sorry. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Links. Uh, it's a political uh, discussion. Um, nowadays, it is difficult to, to know the effects uh, or impact of farm to fork strategy. Uh, the strategy, uh, like uh, you are you saying, is a roadmap um, without any impact assessment, but with more than 27 initiatives, uh, uh, political and legal, uh, to be undertaken by Commission. Um, it is uh, unclear how the strategy plans will reflect the new strategy, how to reduce the pesticides if not at alternative uh, available, how to force uh, farms to become organic, uh, regardless the law uh, of supply and demand, and um, how to keep a level playing field with third countries. Um, the sector is highly concerned in Spain. Farmers see a very um, unbalanced, uh, strategy that puts uh, the focus only on environment, neglecting the economic and social aspects of, of farming. Um, farmers in Spain were struggling um, ahead of the pandemic. They were demonstrating all around the country for several reasons, such as low prices, tariffs from the US, unfair practices, uh, lack of uh, protection products, the situation has worsened uh, and farm to fork is just a partial response to their needs, but only just a partial response. Um, one example uh, to, to Spain, my country. Uh, in Spain, we export 70% uh, of fruit and vegetables we produce. Um, it means that local market is not the, the, the response, it's not the solution for a productive agriculture like ours. So uh, we want our farmers to remain competitive in a global market. Uh, that, that's what we need uh, about our farmers. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Let's maybe switch now to the, to the, to the scientific, uh, uh, well, one, one of the scientists who, who, who definitely has quite strong views on the whole process of, of, of approval and the political discussion. Mr. Kunz, when you hear um, targets being set by political um, uh, uh, representatives. And when you hear the way that the European institutions have been discussing the scientific method and scientific institutions, what is your reaction um, to this discussion? How, 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 how does, what, what is your assessment of the way that the political system evaluates what the agricultural sector ought to do? Well, I, obviously, obviously, it's a, it's a political it's a political act to 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 set targets. I have, I have nothing against this. I'm a scientist, but uh, scientists are, are not here to to rule uh, Europe or any country. Um, but it's it's obviously not science based. But I think it it would be sensible that it is technically based and, and realistic. And uh, I would say also that we look at, at, at the background. I'm a biologist, but I'm also a fan of history. So I like to look back where we're coming from and, and, and what we're doing now and when, what we can do tomorrow. So one has to remind probably people or just people probably don't know that 
since 1950, basically when the, these chemicals were used in the beginning, really, because we had new molecules that were useful and the people, people were happy to use them, farmers. The, the average toxicity of this compound as a whole has been divided by 8.5. The doses required have been, the hectare have been divided by 34, 34. 70, 75% of the molecules that were used in the early 90s are no longer used. So we have already done quite a lot and, and we should be proud of this. And so I have difficulties to see and, and we should we should praise the farmers that they, they have been able to adapt to, to the new uh, demands of, of, of consumers, of, of, of politicians, and so. On. So I have difficulties to, to to understand why there is this um, uh, trend to to push it even further, to reduce uh, why fifty percent and not sixty and not forty. And, um, so I have a little bit uh, a feeling that we are. Um, if it would be politics, I would I would nothing to say about it. Um, but I have the feeling it's kind of a religion that you have to be against synthetic pesticides, and you are not against pesticides which are used by organic farming because they are using pesticides as well, not the same, but pesticides, and some are very toxic. So there is a, a kind of um, I would say near religious uh, choice in Europe. And if I you if I read this text for um, folk to um, the, Farm to folk. Yes. Um, sorry, I forgot the the, the, the title. Um, Farm to folk. Um, I'm very surprised to read things like um, we want to live living in harmony with nature. Um, I think this is a little bit just strange to me because it's it's I found it um, a little bit childish to be honest. So why, why in Europe do do, do we start to think in, in such a way? It, it's it's a religion of nature. I would even say a kind of neo-paganistic way to to, to 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 see our world. So this is quite interesting to to me as as a history. Uh, historian of science as well as being a biologist. Um, but to some extent, it's, it's a little bit uh, frightening, I would say. And um, there are other things which are, if I look at, again at, at the text, um, there is a sentence saying, for a fair, healthy, and environmentally friendly food system. Uh, so, I don't know exactly what, what is meant by fair, but it, it seems to me that we introduce a kind of morality in the food system, which is also something that I have a bit difficulties to, to understand. Then it healthy, healthy concept. It, it said in the other part of, of, of this document that it's 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 already healthy. Food, European food is already healthy. And I believe that most human beings on this planet would like, to, would love to have the, the food standards that we have already in Europe. So why do we, do we, are we obsessed to, to, to develop something like um, that should be healthy while well, it's already healthy? And um, and as I said about environment and agriculture, we have made already already a huge uh, huge uh, progress, uh, and, and it would be nice to recognize it. Uh, so basically, this is my my first feeling about about reading this this text. Thank you. Actually, um, that 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 makes an, a, a transition. I, I, Mr. Linz, I initially wanted to ask you also your reaction as to like what the the effects would be on Germany. But maybe let's focus in on Germany for a different reason. Germany's political transition on the more environmentalist side has led most of the much of the motivation in the European Union to make changes on agriculture. The fact that uh, the, the, the Green Party has made immense advances in, in, in your home country is a big reason why we are uh, discussing these topics more than we maybe otherwise would have. First of all, would you agree with that assessment that it is the environmentalist movement in your country? Or do you think that your own party would also be moving in this direction if it weren't for 
for the political pressure that you receive from, from, the, from the Greens. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> thank, thank you very much for this question. I would not say that it's, oh, uh, it's only a, a German thing, not that um, we only have uh, this discussion in, in, in Germany. I would say it's more a Nordic yeah, or a, a, a discussion uh, which you have in, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in, in, in maybe in, in, in Belgium, in Denmark, and uh, maybe more or even, even more ambitious when, when it comes to this question, uh, we have this discussion in Sweden or uh, Finland, so more or less in, in, in the Nordic countries in, uh, in, in Europe. But as I mentioned before, when I give you the example of my region um, where, I, where I live, yeah, we, for example, we have a, we have we as EPP <laughs> a party have a coalition with with the Greens in my region, yeah, and that uh, before now I described the the, the the outcome. Yeah, when when we as EPP party you know, are more in favor uh, to go for a science based approach and uh, go more for a market driven approach, you know, the Greens were more in the direction you know, of um, ambitious targets and pesticides né, and then and then ambitious ambitious target uh, when it comes to organic uh, farming for example i didn't uh, mention that before né? we also have um, a target in my region or a corridor a target in my region in in place now so it's in law yeah uh, that um, we uh, want uh, to 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 reach or uh, to to fulfill a target with 30 till 40 percent uh, of organic farming um, uh, till uh, 20 uh, through 2030. So there you can see uh, it's even more ambitious uh, than um, even more ambitious that than the European um, that the Euro than the European ambitious. But you now when you look on the whole picture in Europe, uh, then you see the the difference. For example, when it comes to organic farming, is is really is really different. Uh, for example, in Ireland, you have. 2.6 percent uh, of, of organic farming yeah? and that uh, uh, we have to take into uh, into consi into consideration yeah? when we uh, when we um, will discuss uh, this within um, within uh, Parliament but but you are that but you are right that yeah? is more or I, I can agree yeah? with this ob observation yeah? that uh, a more Nordic yeah, uh, discussion uh, gets more and more a European one. Yeah? So maybe that's, uh, that's more or less uh, uh, the situation uh, now. And I think uh, we in the parliament uh, have to, to guarantee a more balanced approach. And there I, I agree with, uh, with Masali uh, Aguilar uh, that we have to integrate or uh, to, to, um, uh, to, to, yeah, we have to, to implement not, not only environment and the climate target, no, but also the social and the economic um, and the economic dimension of this um, the both of these two strategies. We hear a lot about targets, but ultimately the question of course for consumer is and this can be a bit con confusing for consumers it's like why do we, we need, why do we need to reduce something by 30, 40, 50 percent? if it's already considered safe. So maybe, Madam Aguilar, for you, the question, this, these safety assessments are done by uh, European uh, institutions, by, by, by agencies of the European Union, the EFSA, the European Food Safety Authority, is doing these assessments. Do you have trust in the scientific process? Do you have trust in the scientific institutions of the European Union? Well, um, at the beginning, uh... Europe is uh, becoming a green because green is trend. And uh, for your information, I would like to say that in, uh, in my country, in Spain, uh, we, are, we have the biggest area of um, organic uh, production and uh, GMOs. And uh, despite changes in the general food law to increase uh, transparency and trust, um, we face a lack of trust in science and lack of trust in the decision-making process. Um, I'm sure Mr. Kunt agrees uh, with, with, uh, with that. Um, 
This is successfully used by a number of uh, green knee, uh, NGOs uh, to influence the pesticide uh, approval. Uh, they defend EFSA if uh, its opinion is against uh, neonics, but attacks EFSA if says that uh, JLOs are, are as safe as a conventional product. So if they say what they like, we can trust on the EU, uh, uh, European Union agencies. If not, they are not independent and real. Um, so commission understood uh, communication is top priority and decided to set up a new plan to communicate on risk assessment, but this is uh, still missing. Uh, transparency is pointless without a proper risk communication. Uh, so um, EPSA, uh, but uh, also the Joint Research Center of the Scientific Advisory Mechanism uh, should have more weight in the risk management uh, phase when approving a crop protection uh, product. And um, what's the solution given by commission? Um, well, a comitology proposal that adds uh, further politicization and complexity uh, to the decision uh, making uh, process. These, these are not very uh, uh, complicated political processes and also <laughs> scientific processes. So maybe let me, let me go to Mr. Kunz and if you, if you can explain to us, so how, like one thing that keeps coming up when politicians in the European Union and, and, and scientific uh, community discusses this, Every one term that always comes up is the precautionary principle. And who interprets the precautionary principle in what way? Can you give us a sense to what is the precautionary principle? And also, how do you think it is applied right now in uh, these approval processes, both for crop protection, uh, uh, but also in other areas of, 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 of the agricultural sector? Well, first, I would like to, to make a short comment on, on, on EFSA. It, it, is, it is clear that we, we have a problem in Europe. And I don't know the northern part of Europe, but in my country, for instance, in France, it's quite clear that there is a lack of trust in, in, in political action, in, in politicians. And to some extent, it's, it's quite sad. And if you have this kind of background, it's difficult to build a confidence in, in, in risk assessment agency because the, the, the absence of trust will, will, will be all over the place. So, but on the other hand, EFSA already has not been defended, defended enough uh, by, by the political authority because they're doing a, a very good job most of the time and they, they, they handle their conflict of interest but still they're attacked on, on this. So this is quite unfair to me and I think they should be defended much more than they are. Now coming back to the precautionary principle, it, it, it's a typically typical uh, European concept that um, to some extent would like to, it's a kind of dream you know, that you can handle all, all the risks, that you can live in, in, a, in a society without risks. And to some extent, Europe was, in my opinion, built on, on, a, on a kind of dream that you want to avoid all kind of tragedy, tragedies. But everybody knows what happened during the 20th century, um, and, and Europe was built to avoid this. And the, the same, the same dream has extended to techn technological risk. And so, this uh, concept, precautionary principle, was invented, uh, trying to I, to to be able to handle potential risks. We are not sure. But maybe there is a problem, and we want to be able to act as soon as possible without waiting for full scientific knowledge. And, and, and we want to take reasonable, proportionate decision, political decision, to, to handle this, this risk, to manage them. Um, the difficulty is, in my opinion, that it has become quite ideological. For some, it means it's a, it's a convenient tool to block many technologies. You can spread some doubts about the technology and then the media will talk about it, become, become a, um, 
a big topic of, of, of interest for media. And then you can try to force the ban of this technology easily with the precautionary principle. So the GMOs is, is really the, one of the best examples you can imagine. Um, that, that the precautionary principle has been used in, in, a, in a kind of um, political way just to, to, to destroy the technology. And uh, maybe it, because it's the, the concept is a little bit, um, how to say, um, not so precise as it looks, because most of the people will understand precautionary principle. So it means principle, you have to have principle. Okay, you should not do just any kind of things, you need principle. But the precautionary principle is more than just having principles. You can have pr principles uh, as a democrat, principle as loving freedom and so on. And um, it has nothing to do with the precautionary principle. And the term precaution is often con confusing as well because it, it can be confused just to take some uh, reasonable measures to avoid, uh, I don't know, uh, any catastrophe, anything, a flood or whatever. You, you ask people to to move out of the area. This has nothing to do with precautionary principle, but I hear often journalists talking about this. It's just a, a sensible decision that you do facing a, a, a real risk, an identified one, and you react. And it has nothing to do with the precautionary principle. So the problem I think with this principle is that it's poorly understood. And I have no solution how it can be properly understood, but this is, is uh, people who know more about, about it than me have published this already, uh, I would say, 20 years ago, and how it can be uh, distorted and used for, for the worst or the best. So that's, uh, but that's basically the problem. I think it's a quite confusing uh, concept. Mm. Yes, and I, and I would like to also get, get Mr. Linz's view on both of the topics we just discussed, both the scientific um, institutions, but also the precautionary principle. Give me sort of an overview what you think is right or wrong uh, in what we just heard. Yeah. Uh, so just want to tell when, when, when I was rapporteur of the so-called uh, special pesticides committee uh, in the last period of the European Parliament, uh, um, the Parliament clearly said, and I was, uh, yeah, uh, what I mentioned before, and I was rapporteur there, I was one of the, uh, the, the writers uh, who, who, wrote, uh, who wrote this report, uh, the Parliament clearly said that, that we can trust um, our European uh, scientific institutions. Um, so this was more or less, uh, uh, or, or the, the background of this committee were more or less the glyphosate. That was more, uh, more or less the glyphosate um, case. Yeah? Uh, but uh, our, our policy making needs to, to remain science-based. And uh, in, in my view, uh, it must not be uh, guided by emotions. And, and I have the feeling that this, that this is often, uh, that this is often um, uh, the case, but uh, the, the, a science-based approach is, in my view, the only way that we can uh, restore uh, trust. Uh, but uh, I'm really of the opinion that EFSA, and I was in a close contact uh, um, when I was a rapporteur in this um, PEST committee, uh, I'm really of the opinion that EFSA, EFSA should improve uh, their, their risk uh, communication uh, skills. I think there is a um, uh, there, there is um, uh, 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 potential uh, to do uh, to do better. And when it comes to the precautionary uh, principle, I can tell you first, it's enshrined in the in the European treaties, and uh, it is a core principle uh, in the European uh, Union. But that means that does not mean, no, like the Greens uh, often are uh, of the opinion. No, that, uh, that it means no, because of the precautionary, uh, precautionary uh, principle, no, we have to be against any application or no, any approval uh, or reapproval um, of, um, um, uh, of, of a pesticide. Yeah? So I can mention that, um, or I, I can uh, bring again this, 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 this uh, idea no, to, to, to go for an for a science-based approach, yeah? and um, we have to, yeah, uh, to consider uh, that, that when we go for um, for uh, poly, uh, uh, yeah, when when we go for policy uh, 
uh, decisions in in that area. So I think that there is often a misuse uh, of that Greek um, uh, cautionary principle in the public debate. That seems to then echo what Mr. 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 To, to a certain extent what Mr. Kunz has said. Um, but Madam Aguilar, I have a different question, more uh, political uh, question. Um, one of one of uh, ECR party's uh, uh, members uh, is uh, the commissioner uh, for uh, agriculture, and Mr. Wojciechowski um, hasn't been what? as outspoken uh, about farm to fork and its objectives as maybe I would have liked to see. What do you think can be um, the changes that are still possible um, within the interpretation of the text? So what can still differ? I mean, the strategy is one thing, but then the legislation that is going to be different. Do you think uh, the influence of Mr. Wojciechowski will be positive uh, on, on this? On this uh, well, um, uh Farm to fork um, and biodiversity focus uh, too much on agriculture. Um, to be more precise, uh, I will say that both strategies are planning more constraints uh, for agriculture production and lack of real incentives to support uh, the so called uh, green transition. Okay? Uh, in this context, uh, it is vital to have a strong voice from our agriculture commissioner uh, to defend the European model of agriculture, which means that uh, different ways of farming can coexist in Europe. Um, so far, uh, the performance uh, of every commissioner um, has been, to me, a little bit uh, frustrating, um, but there is uh, a lot of uh, room for improvement and I am optimistic, really. I have always been optimistic. So um, we cannot leave uh, Santé and MB commissioners alone leading the debate because, and uh, it, uh, I say that because it's, uh, to me it's very important because the main target group of uh, upcoming 27 initiatives in the, is the farming uh, community. Uh, so every voice needs to be heard. So here, and um, I have four major demands to Commissioner and DG Agri. First one, uh, defend the diversity of European Union agriculture, okay? Uh, the second one is facilitate a toolbox for farmers. Um, the third one is explain uh, uh, envy Commissioner why food security is a still one key objective. And the fourth is without probability, uh, profitability, sorry, in farming, it's impossible to keep the environment in good uh, shape. Uh, well, uh, that is my, my, my opinion. There's a, there's a lot of issues in there. And I, and I, and I think one, um, one of the topics that, uh, that, has, that I wanted to raise, but I have already seen that, that it was raised in a question I received that I would like to put to, to, to Mr. Linz, because um, it actually phrases it a bit better than I uh, could have done it. So here's a person who says, reduction of chemicals used in agriculture seems to be a good idea in, in general, but what about consumers that cannot afford to pay two euros for a cucumber? Should we look much more at the impoverished effects of such policies? Um, maybe also in context, uh, Commissioner Timmerman said in, in your committee at one point that people need to be need to be ready to pay more for sustainable food. What does that mean? Does everybody really need to pay to double just so we can achieve these targets? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so um, there uh, we and, and that's that's what, what we criticized um, when when the both strategy came came out no? that we really need an impact um, on not only on, on uh, what is the impact on the agriculture sector, no, but what is the impact on the whole supply chain and then uh, supply chain. Yeah, and at the end, what is the impact 
um, on the consumers. We have different economic situation in the different member states of the European Union. Uh, maybe uh, coming from a yeah, more or less from a richer uh, region in the European Union. Uh, the most, the most, not all of the people in my region. Uh, the most of the people are able to pay more uh, for food. Uh, they just. Uh, uh, they they uh, uh, just use about 10% of they of their money uh, uh, to uh, to buy food, but this is not the case in in other regions of the European uh, Union, uh, uh, not in the eastern uh, part, and not in the and, and not in the southern part, uh, and and not even uh, in all parts of Germany, uh, and not uh, and, and and not all uh, yeah um, and, and and not 100 percent of. Um, the population in my country yeah, is able to pay more uh, for food. So this we have to take uh, into uh, consideration when we, when we discuss it. But uh, there, um, I'm, I'm not often agree with, with Timmermans, but I agree uh, that that is up or that's up to the consumer uh, or it's a part of the decision of the com uh, consumer uh, to do more or to have at the end a, a, a even more sustainable uh, agriculture uh, uh, a system you know, when when they go uh, when they go to the to the supermarket and and it's not only uh, the aim of um, uh, of uh, politics or of uh, political uh, decisions in the in the in the in the, in the different uh, in the different um, uh, levels yeah? but uh, I think, yeah, and and this was the reason why we, as EPP, asked to propose to postpone uh, the the presentation of this uh, two uh, strategy. That you now have to implement the lesson the lessons learned uh, from the COVID nineteen uh, crisis. Né? That means that when it comes to the supply uh, chain, né? when it comes to the question of open or uh, closed uh, borders, when it comes to the uh, to questions of internal the, the guarantee um, of, of uh, our internal uh, market and when it comes to the discussion of a more regional uh, production uh, there you you have to discuss uh, uh, several things i give you an example uh, in my country we now have a discussion on on smaller uh, slaughterhouses uh, i'm uh, really in favor of of this discussion uh, but that means uh, maybe uh, you have to allow a slaughterhouse in your neighborhood. Yeah? And then the discussion is different. Yeah? So yeah, I, I just want to tell you then yeah, uh, all these things, yeah, all these things have uh, uh, has to be taken into, uh, into, con into, into consideration. And there, yeah, as you know, these two strategies are very clear and very concrete when it comes to agriculture. When it comes to the question uh, what the farmers have to fulfill, but these strategies are very weak when it comes to the uh, to the role of the whole uh, supply chain, and these strategies are these strategies are very weak uh, when it comes to the role of cons consumers. And I think this is one of the aims uh, uh, and and one of uh, uh, this uh, of the di discussions we have to do um, uh, uh, in in the European Parliament. We have another question, um, and, and I think it's an interesting, very important part of the debate. And, um, and I think it's something that uh, Mr. Linz had a few very interesting things to say also in a, in a recent webinar that I watched. But I want to put the question first to Mr. Kunz. Um, so here's a person who says, why is organic farming considered healthier and more environmentally friendly? It uses highly toxic pesticides, including synthetic pesticides like copper sulfate, cop copper sulfate, sorry. It requires more land to produce the same amount of food, which means more destruction of habitat. Um, so uh, the, the question is a bit rhetorically put, will the EU cut organic pesticide use, including copper and sulfur by, uh, 50, uh, by 50 percent? But I think, I think the, the way that I would put the question to you is there seems to be um, this opposition between conventional agriculture and organic agriculture and the assumption in the minds of number of people that organic agriculture is sustainable what can you what, what would be your assessment of that is organic agriculture the way we want to go if you want to feed the world and do it sustainably well i, I don't think you're going to to be honest to feed the world the whole world with organic uh, agriculture that's 
I met the organic farmer, the non ever told me that organic farming is, is there to feed the whole world. These are some ideologists that, uh, ideologues that put this forward, but I, I think it's, it's not, uh, it's not the real goal. I think organic farming has developed because there were some excesses of, of, of conventional farming and, uh, which, which is understandable. But, uh, as I said before, also the conventional farmer improved. So one also has to balance the view. Do we really need a, uh, more organic farming and, and not just not improving the, the convention. Um, organic farming has some, some merits. Okay. I, I, I think everybody would agree that the soils are of better quality, uh, than conventional farming in, in, in general, not, not necessarily everywhere, but to some, on average, they would be better. But on the other hand, the yields are much lower. So it means that if, it's, it's a kind of, uh, in, fr in French, we call it a niche production, just a, a side production. It, that's, that's not a problem. But if you want to increase it and it should feed the whole world, then it becomes a problem. Because if you want to produce the same amount of food uh, with, with lower yields, you need more land to produce it. And if you need more land, then you have to sacrifice some natural uh, land and, and convert it to agriculture. And I think the, the, the yield gap of, of, of organic farming is usually underestimated because it doesn't take into account that you also need manure and things like this. So you have to grow, you have to feed you the, the cattle also, and you need land to feed the cattle, which is not probably not often taken into account when you really calculate the yields of, of organic farming. And in addition, if you look, I looked how much uh, organic products are imported in, in, in Europe. Uh, I didn't find the figures for the whole Europe, but in my country, it's 31%, which I think it, it's a lot for uh, far, uh, an agricultural country like, like France. And if you look at it, half comes, which is imported, comes from another European country. Okay, fine. But the other half comes from other continents. And the, 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 the country that provides us with most agricultural product is China. So 12.7% comes from China. And the second one is, um, okay, it's Ukraine, but uh, almost equal with Turkey. So do we really want to favor, it's a political choice. Do we really want to favor import from these two countries, which I kind of doubt that they share our European values, but okay, it's a political question. So the, this, this, I think, are all questions that have to be taken into account. One has to take into account the, the yields, the, toxicity of, of some products and, and so on. So the, we, we cannot just discuss it by having, again, some kind of religious be belief that uh, organic farming is, is superior and can feed the world. It's, it's a much more complex picture, I think. Well, speaking of, speaking of out, uh, excuse outside- Excuse me, excuse me, yeah. can, I, can, I, can I say something <laughs> about that? Um, we can't not use the promotion of organic agriculture uh, to attack the conventional agriculture because both can coexist to, to achieve the goals. Um, I, I say before that in Spain, we, we are the, 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 the most uh, big uh, area in, in organic agriculture, but in, in, in my opinion, in our opinion, it's not necessary to attack uh, the conventional agriculture to defend the organic agriculture. I repeat that in our opinion, both can coexist. And uh, it's necessary to, that the commission understand this situation. Both the organic and conventional agriculture can coexist perfect. So it's not necessary to attack one and to defend the other, okay? Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. And, and uh, actually, on let, let's stay very briefly on ag uh, organic agriculture because Mr. Linz, I actually have a question for you. Um, the, the number of farmer, or, uh, farmer associations are worried that with increasing the amount of organic agriculture, that also means you, you are increasing the supply. You said that consumers have their role, and I think the farm to fork strategy acknowledges that. But if consumers don't buy organic agricultural products, then the price crashes and our farmers would be in serious trouble. How do we address that problem without resorting yeah. to transfers? Yeah, so that, yeah, so that, 
was that what, what I mentioned what I mentioned before when I talked about corridors and when I talked about um, uh, the strategy or the, uh, the approach that it should be more market driven. Yeah? The one is that you have a target on the European level, yeah? but the other thing is yeah, to, to talk about the demands, yeah? talk, talk about the demand of people. So I just give you an example, which uh, uh, really exists exists today in the in the European Union. Um, Austria has an organic uh, farming uh, percentage of 25%. So yeah, more or less Austria ful fulfilled uh, the European target uh, when it comes to organic agriculture, uh, not in 2030, uh, they fulfilled it in, uh, in 2020. Yeah? But when you then talk about a more regional uh, production uh, and when you then uh, when you are of the opinion that the regional uh, uh, production is more sustainable no, than, uh, uh, than, than, the other, than the other one. Yeah? When, when you look at the figures in Austria, then you would see that this 25% of organic uh, products yeah, are only sell, sold in Austria by 9%. Yeah? And, the other, yeah, and uh, the other products are exported uh, for example, to Italy, to Switzerland, and the most of them, the most of the pro products are exported to my country, yeah? to to Germany. Yeah. So what I want, uh, what I wanted to, to say is that uh, on the one hand is um, a, a target for the organic um, uh, for the organic farming, but on the other hand, um, the, we 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 should not forget uh, the question of uh, how we could increase or how yeah. Uh, uh, we uh, or, or we should uh, talk about uh, the demand, and that's not that's not in the strategy. No? And that was the reason why I talked about the, the whole uh, the whole supply chain. Yeah? Uh, and and this was no? uh, in in that. Yeah, I, I see a lot of legislative initiative initiatives by the Commission when it comes to agriculture, no? but less legislative initiatives no? when it comes. Uh, to, to the um, uh, to the supply chain or chain or um, uh, for example what uh, has to be done by the retailers uh, uh, for example no? there is nothing there's nothing in um, uh, this uh, uh, to st uh, strategy and then when you for example no? just mention one 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 target uh, just to mention one target in the biodiversity strategy when you put 10% uh, of the agricultural land as high protected areas where you don't allow agriculture uh, production. And when you then talk about self-sufficiency uh, and, and it was mentioned no, that we're, by, by Mr. Kunz that we have a lot of imports from Ukraine, from Turkey and, and even uh, from, from, from China. No? I have the feeling no, when, when these strategies would uh, stay as they are, no? Then we will have in, in, in 10 years' time, we will have uh, our imports doubled or, yeah, or, or, even, or even more. And, uh, and then we have to ask the question is this really sustainable? So, uh, this has to be included as well in our discussions. Yeah? What is our, yeah, uh, what we, for example, not what we would like to do with great uh, deals, yeah? what we would like to do or what. Uh, for which standards no, we would like to ask uh, when it comes to imports from third countries. All these questions no, are not or maybe weak mentioned in, 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 the, in these uh, uh, commission strategies. I think you're raising an important point there because ultimately, the, especially in the beginning of your comment, uh, it is ultimately up to consumers also need to develop a certain uh, want for products and and i know that i mean as somebody from luxembourg i know the, the the german food culture is very diverse but what i've noticed is that there is a big hunger <laughs> uh, you you'll you'll uh, to, to, to use the pun uh, for uh, organic uh, farming products uh, which if i travel to a country like bulgaria exists considerably less so ultimately, the choices that consumers make and the information available to them is also something that, 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 that will play a, a, an important role. I will ask, I think, all of our panelists uh, one last question and to associate it with the closing statement because we're coming to the end of our uh, webinar. So I'll start with Mr. Mr. Kunz. You, you said that um, uh, we are dependent on, on, on imports quite a bit and a lot 
is done in international trade, the European Union is even having more and more, trying to have more and more to have trade agreements. Um, if you think about the future of agriculture in Europe, are we falling behind? Would you say that you are optimistic or pessimistic if you, would, if you were to be asked, what is the situation of agriculture in Europe in like a year, 2050? What would you say? Well, I, I would like to be optimistic, you know, but I spent um, about 20 years of my life to convince the European politician that biotechnology is a useful tool, you know, for Europe and uh, without much success. So I think it, it's after this, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to, to feel really 100% optimistic, but uh, okay, let, let's, let's try because we have, we have capacities in, 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 in Europe. Uh, but I think we have to consider ourselves as um, a little bit differently than we did in the past. We are kind of um, facing, I mean, facing is not, um, not going on war, huh? but we are facing uh, two superpowers, USA, China. And I, I think that Europe is not considering it enough itself as a power. It, it is based on values and a big market and, and so on. And it has to rethink the, this um, power concept. I think it's really a change of paradigm that I think has to, 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 to be part of, of the debate. And then maybe it doesn't mean we should aggress as a country, huh? it's not, uh, not the case, but we should consider that um, might is something important. And we have, we have uh, tools, we, have, uh, we can develop, if you want to reduce pesticide, for instance, we can develop digital tools we can develop biological control tools. We can develop biotechnology. Again, I'm mentioning this because it's, it's just a truth, but biotechnology, agricultural biotechnology is almost banned in Europe, apart from Spain. Uh, I, I think this is, this is not um, reasonable. It's not reasonable at all. Uh, so we, 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 I would become optimistic if, if, I, if I would see a beginning of, of um, a debate on this, uh, on this um, implementing new tools without ideology. But I, I, I don't see it really. If I read this European document, I don't see really many reasons to, to be optimistic. I think it's at least part based on ideology and some magical thinking. And um, actually I'm quite more worried about, about the future of Europe if we continue on, on this. Um, on, on this basis, but maybe I'm, I'm too pessimistic. Maybe one should be more optimistic. So I hope that the politicians and especially the boss who, who are here, because I think it's probably their job to, to, to make us feel more optimistic uh, about, about our, our future. I hope they will, they will succeed to, to lead. But whatever the party is, I'm not here to, to say who are, the, who are my, my, my favorite um, parties, but I think it's their, it's their job. We are scientists, we can provide the information, we put the information on the table, uh, and then you take or you don't take, but I uh, hope you will take at least part of it. And, and, uh, okay, that's uh, basically my conclusion. Right, I, I, will ask, I will ask Mr. Linz for a conclusion and we will leave the last word to Madame Aguilar. Um, so so Mr., Mr. Linz, how much, you, 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 you will be asked for comment quite a lot. Uh, the Farm to Fork strategy has a long legislative road ahead. Um, what, of, of all the comments you make, how much input do you think you will be able to give and how much positive change will there be? Um, and then ultimately the same question, how optimistic or pessimistic are you for the future? Yeah, so I'm, <clears throat> I'm always uh, very optimistic, yeah. And uh, we, are, uh, we are at the start of a process. Yeah? So we, we, we had now the presentation of these two uh, strategy, uh, strategies. And um, as you can see, uh, I'm a little bit critical on, on some parts of this uh, strategy. I'm in favor of the concept as a whole to overcome uh, the silo uh, thinking. Yeah? But I think there is a lot, there is a lot to do um, when um, we discuss these two strategies uh, in, in the parliament uh, and we have uh, uh, not only, and, and we have to avoid um, uh, bashing, uh, bashing the agriculture sector and I had the feeling you know, when it comes to PR that was one, 
that was a part yeah? uh, that was a part of the intention um, by some uh, by, by, by some in, in, in the European uh, Commission and we have to take um, we have to take the farmers uh, the farmers on board I think that's that's really uh, that's really important and then when we are able to do this and go maybe more or less for this concept give farmers in, in incentives yeah, and avoid as much as possible obligations so I would prefer uh, this way uh, to go and then I'm I'm optimistic um, uh, for for the future of the agricultural sector um, in in the European Union thank you very much thank you and and then the last word from Madame Aguilar you will have to be arguing a lot, I suppose, with Mr. Linz and his party and other parties in the in the committee and the parliament along this way. Um, what do you think? Uh, what 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 is going to happen? And uh, how optimistic are you that uh, that positive changes can be made and that you can be heard uh, towards your criticisms? Well. Um, I'm optimistic. I said that before. Uh, I'm ready to make changes. Uh, this is just the beginning uh, of a long and complex discussion. Uh, uh, when I say before, uh, more than 27 initiatives will be put in the table and decisions will be made together with the European Parliament. I promise all the participants today that I will, uh, I will do my best to make uh, the farm to fork strategy an opportunity for all farmers, all European farmers. Um, that are looking for profitability and a better environment uh, performance. Um, let me conclude saying that the farm to fork strategy cannot impose one single model of agriculture because our mother Now we lost her. Huh? Think we did. Yeah, I think uh, the connection dropped on their side. Um, Lucas, should we wait a second or should we wrap it up? Uh, let's let's wait a second. Let's wait a second. Let's see if she can reconnect. We did we did very well up until <laughs> our, the connection was was good to us. Ah, uh, European Parliament. Uh, she left, so let's see if she can. I can see two, uh, two times, so let's see. Maybe she can join. Unfortunate to cut her off at the at the at the the, the, the first half, but uh, I, Luca, I think I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. I, I don't think it makes necessarily sense to wait. Uh, yeah, uh, but. Right. Um, but uh, in any way, thank you to all the panelists who participated today. To all of our audience, those in the Zoom and on all social media platforms, please uh, uh, follow our panelists on their social media and see what they're up to. And, uh, and then follow, of course, the, the work of the Consumer Choice Center online. You can follow us on all the social media platforms. And we also publish a bunch of, uh, of, of uh, papers on the issue of agriculture. We communicate a lot on this topic, and we will, of course, uh, communicate more and hopefully have some of our guests of today back on in the future as this conversation continues. In any way, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and then uh, see you with the uh, new content, new conferences, webinars after the, the summer break. Thank you very much. See thank you. you. Have a nice day.